A few weeks ago, I made this open frame case, and while I was working on it, I kind of got the idea that I could make a, a case that was a little more expandable and customizable using the same kind of uh, thought process of making several small pieces that were easily printable and then assembling it into a much bigger case depending on what you actually needed. So this is where I really started with. I saw this as a design and I tried to see what I could do in order to uh, bring this into a, uh, a printable case that would be, you know, not open frame, but a traditional case that could be easily customized as well as expandable. So as your needs change, you could actually just adjust your case to fit whatever you needed at the moment. And this is what I came up with. So pretty much taking the original case and putting walls around it. Uh, it has the basic same dimensions as the other one, uh, but just putting, putting walls on, on either side. And then uh, from there, kind of raising everything up. And one of the first things that I discovered then uh, with this new design was how it was not really going to work. And the, the other case was designed to have the motherboard printed there on the left side and print upwards and have the power supply here at the bottom but with everything being then printed going upwards um, if i were to add anything on top of this it would quickly eat into the space that was allocated for the motherboard one of the other things that really became immediately transparent was that this was not going to be able to print uh, because of having this section here with the power supply and the motherboard right there it was not going to be able to print without a lot of supports underneath and if you've seen any of my other cases i don't like using support so that was one thing uh, the other thing was the size of this case here uh, it did not have a lot of room to allow cables to pass through from the bottom all the way up to the top uh, because of how small it was so with uh, the power supply here it wasn't too big an issue um, but with everything else going stacking up higher it would not have enough space especially with the gpu it would eat up all that space right there and not be able to continue rising up and passing through either air or the power cables the next step in the design process was going into tinkercad and creating a uh, a basic overview of what I wanted to create. So if you were following this whole post on Reddit, this is the version that you saw here. Uh, the biggest change between uh, the previous model and this one is going to be this one is designed to print without support. So this so this bar across the IO plate of the motherboard, uh, that is actually not printed as part of the motherboard case. That has been broken off as a separate piece uh, on top, which will be the riser stack piece. Um, the second thing is going to be these humps on the left and right side, which is then used to uh, slot the each of the stack pieces um, from either below or on top um, and keep everything lined up. And then you can kind of see the, the cutouts here for passing through um, the, the cables and accessing the bottom of the motherboard. And around the front of this part is going to be the opening for the 16 millimeter power button. This is the spacer that would go on top of either the motherboard or on top of the GPU in order to give it more clearance space. Um, so if you needed additional CPU cooler clearance height, you would just print one or more of these of uh, sprizers and then that would give you the additional heights that you needed in order to fit a larger cooler or whatever you needed to fit underneath there. Going over to the GPU, it's kind of the same story here. Uh, it does support a dual slot GPU, uh, but if you needed the additional clearance of like a triple slot cooler, you could put a, a riser on top of this and that would give you some additional space uh, to do a triple slot cooler. Uh, it does fit roughly 175 millimeter GPU length. The other part was going to be the, the top of the whole unit. And uh, for this example, I went with a ventilated top um, basically just to kind of hide the little pumps or whatever um, from the original design. Uh, that way uh, everything would look a little cleaner uh, in the end when you put it all together. 
So the next step was to take everything I learned from Tinkercad and recreate everything in Fusion, uh, since it's a little bit easier to get uh, specific dimensions and everything uh, from inside of Fusion instead of in Tinkercad. Um, the first thing I decided was how to uh, fit everything together. And what I did was I went with a snap fit method. So the top piece will actually snap into the piece beneath it. Um, and that is what kind of holds it all together. And basically I designed everything from the ground up. So starting with the base, then the ITX, then the riser, then the SFX piece. Then we did the three and a half inch drive and the two and a half inch drive. And then we put in GPUs and then the fans and then put the same cover on top with a ventilated top portion. And at this point, I was at the same stage as I was in Tinkercad, uh, having a fully assembled model, but now I wanted to go through and see what parts of the design worked and what parts didn't. The first thing was obviously I had not built in enough tolerances uh, to 3D print the snap fits, so I had to expand upon that. And then the second thing was I had to redesign uh, the top piece because it took entirely too long to print. It was gonna be like a 12 to 13 hour print. Um, and so getting rid of the perforation pattern made everything print much faster and look a little bit cleaner there. With the final design, I pretty much took what I learned from the top piece and got rid of all the, the bottom perforations on all the parts. So the GPU and the SFX, instead of having perforated holes at the bottom, uh, we went in and just made cutouts. That way each of the fans there could breathe and it would be easier to keep it cool, as well as reduce print time and re reduce some of the filament usage. Taking a look at the completed design, uh, it's gonna be roughly 185 by 185 when printed. And uh, the height is gonna be dependent on what you actually need. But the, the, the basic size is gonna be roughly five liters uh, if you have the ITX and the SFX, one spacer, the base, and the cover on top. If you printed everything here as shown, it would be just under nine liters. Taking a look at the design top to bottom, the top is going to be the cover with the slats here instead of the perforations because that reduced the print time. And underneath that is going to be the space for the fans. You can have four 70 millimeter fans or one 140 millimeter fans. And there's cutouts on the left and the bottom. That way you can pass through cables. The bottom is going to be your primary pass through for cables and the left is going to be mostly for the PCIe as well as some of the power cables for the CPU. And the way that this stack is currently designed, uh, you actually don't really need those pass-throughs for the fan piece. Uh, but since I made this whole thing so you can put the stack in whatever order you want, so if you needed the fans further down and where you needed multiple fans, uh, then that way you can still do that and have the pass-through for all the cables. Below this is going to be the GPU and the slot on the left is for the PCIe riser and there's places so you can screw in the PCIe riser there. Um, and it does support roughly 175 millimeters in GPU length uh, and by default it does do uh, a stock two slot card um, and if you needed more space on top of that you can add a spacer on top of this. Below this are dual 2.5 inch drives and uh, right now they're held in by friction, but if you know if we, if we need to, we can make an adjustment to this design in order to maybe screw into this beam in the middle or maybe add in bumpers or something, some way to, to secure them. Uh, but for the most part right now, there's held in by friction in between the two slots. Beneath this is going to be a slot for a 3.5 inch drive. Uh, some people were asking for a vertical uh, arrangement so you could have multiple drives in the same slot. Uh, and we, that's something we can look into in the future. But as of right now, uh, for most people, this is probably going to be the best arrangement because it, you would need more than three drives for it to have any kind of space savings between them. Um, so uh, for a single drive, yeah, unless you need four drives, having three singles is going to be a smaller arrangement in the case. Under the three and a half inch drive is the SFX power supply. So it actually can support SFX L. There is an additional length there. Um, and then there's the cutout here in order for the fan to breathe. That way, if you wanted to put the fan um, in a different arrangement, it, if you wanted to have the fan up or down, both would actually work. Um, and then there is the, the slots here on the left and the right. That way you can pass the cable down into the, the CPU for the CPU power right underneath. Or if you needed to do pass it up, it's there too. 
Beneath that is going to be the riser for uh, 10 millimeters. Uh, you will need to print at least one of these in order to add some support for the IO bracket on the motherboard piece. Uh, but if you needed to get additional height or you wanted for the GPU, you can print more and more of these. Uh, we might add in a, one of a bigger size in the future, but as of right now, 10 millimeters is what we're doing. And obviously the bottom is going to be the motherboard. So uh, there's a huge cutout on the bottom of the motherboard. That way you actually can access the bottom of the CPU. And there's also the cutouts there on the top and the right. That way you can still pass through cables if for some reason the motherboard is not the base of the unit. Um, so if you wanted to have the power supply at the bottom, you could still run cables up into the motherboard from there. Um, or if the GPU is in the bottom or whatever you wanted to do, um, all these uh, spaces still here. That way uh, you can kind of arrange everything in whatever order you want it to. And at the front, you have the single 16 millimeter power port. Um, you could add in USB if you really wanted to. I chose not to, just to make it a little bit cleaner, but it should be relatively easy if you needed to do so. And beneath that is the base plate. So the base plate is currently flat. Uh, this can be edited and designed however you wanted to in case you wanted to run, you know, maybe air vents or something underneath it. Um, but in that way, you'd probably need to actually raise up the whole case a little bit. Uh, so right now it's flat, but this is something is kind of like a blank slate if you needed to adjust to whatever needs you, you had for your particular case configuration. But yeah, here is the finished case. I'm really anxious to see how everybody kind of responds to this and all the suggestions I'm sure I'm going to get on uh, things that I can improve upon, as well as additional stack pieces I can work on to support different variety of hardware. Uh, but it's going to be out here. It's going to be on Thingiverse. It's going to be on Cults 3D. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.